of applause for DJ, producer and composer, Agoria. Thank you for joining us today. Um, you've released on big underground house and techno labels like Inner Visions, Compact, Hot Flush, um, but you also create bespoke music outside of that for film and TV. Can you tell us how you got into that field, first of all? When I started, I was doing like um, cinema school, so I was not into uh, music that much. I, was, I really wanted to be like director or assistant director, this kind of thing. And there is a day, like maybe I was 18 or, or 19, where um, during my, my school, uh, my school uh, years, I had a call from a director named James Sivori, which is a famous uh, UK director. And he said that he wanted me to work as an assistant director for two, three uh, months with him. And so I need to move uh, to, to, to travel in England for three months to work on this movie. And the same day, I had a call from a, from, a, from a booker saying, hey, would you like to do the opening DJ set for Carl Cox and Richie Oting? And I was like such a fan of electronic music already. And it was just my beginning and never played before. And so I was like, what will I choose today? You know, like I need to choose between these two. And that's the day I said, okay, maybe I will start to do electronic music and maybe later I will come back to, to cinema and to music uh, productions and maybe writing for cinema because I love to write too. So that day I was like really jumping between these two. And um, actually I, I decided to open for Carl Cox and Richard in that day. So I was maybe like, they may be in 20 years old. And it was a disaster. <laughs> I mean, I played and I think, honestly, I think nobody danced. I think the, the dance floor was totally empty. It was zero people on, on the dance floor. And I was like, I did the fucking wrong choice, you know? <laughs> And then, you know, like, um, um, Richie Otin or Carl Cox played after me and everybody came. So it was like 1,000 people around, you know, it was a circle. Everybody was like looking at me like this. Who is this opening DJ? What is he doing? You know, maybe I was really bad to, uh, to be honest. It was my first gig. So, and then everybody came to dance on the dance floor. Then I was uh, in the backstage. I didn't show up till everybody left the club. So when did the next opportunity come along for you to write for a film? Oh, it's a long time after, I think it's 10 years after I started, I think maybe like uh, when I was 30 years old. And um, I did release two albums at that time. And uh, Luc Besson production for the film Go Fast called me to make music for the movie. And I started to do like, um, I think yeah, it was 10 years ago, or something like this, that I did the first... Uh, that was a banging soundtrack. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good. Um, so I guess one of the key differences between writing music for yourself as, um, as an artist versus writing for a film is that it's not really about you anymore. Would you agree with that statement? Well, I mean, we, of course we all need ego if, we, if we're on stage or if we do music for, for ourselves or even for a movie. I think it's much a question about um, self-love and to be like, uh, to find the right balance between like what our own taste, what we believe um, to be appreciated either by the director and, um, and the audience. So it's, um, it's a long process. I think we will, we will discuss this a bit later. Uh, there are a few ways of doing this, but um, yeah, this, this, this moment when you do music for yourself for an album, of course, it's just you, it's just like, uh, few days or a few weeks or maybe one hour in studio just having an idea and going through this but when you like receive a synopsis sometimes you don't have the image you just have the synopsis and so you have to to just imagine what will be the image uh, what the director is thinking how the characters will evolve during the movie so it's like much more like uh, putting yourself in the other uh, characters minds but still it's your own uh, it's your own feeling, and, and so of course you need to put yourself love in it. And so, do you work on the music on your own, or do you have a partner for these films? No, most of most of the music I did till now, it's um, I did all we, on on, my, on myself. But the, I'm just starting now to to work on um, with a sound designer named Nicolas Becker, and another music composer named Jérôme Robatier. And so we are like starting to work um, on music together. Nicolas is is amazing sound designer. I don't know if you saw the movie like Gravity or um, The Arrival, Ex Machina, like this sci-fi anticipation movie. So he's the sound designer of this, and he's is just insane. He's very good. And Jerome is really good also to compose music for movies. So it's a good team. What I learned recently is like I really love to. 
to work with other artists, other producers, because we stuck in studio most of the time, you know, building a kick drum and snare drum or whatever for hours and hours. And sometimes it's also good to have, you know, inspiration from outside and then just to pick here and there the, the best parts to make something new. Are you making music together in the studio or remotely? We, we do both, both sides. I think we both, I mean, the three of us are working on, on our own studios and then we, we reunite our, all the sounds we did. We, we, we try to see which fits with it, which other ones. And then, uh, then I elect what I prefer for the, for the movie most of the time. And so who, who is it that comes up with the initial music brief for the film? Is it the director? It really depends. The directors are very different. Uh, each director gets different backgrounds. Some directors, they know nothing about music. So they are like really trusting you and give you like wild cards. So you it, can help really shape the music briefs then? Yeah, exactly. That must be fun. That's very difficult actually. <laughs> Because you, you, you have no clue what the director wants. Yeah. And so it's really, you know, like you have like um, a white paper and you, don't know, really, you really don't know if you want something like will be like um, deep, something really like you can really hear, something that will be really in the background. It's like uh, you need to have a lot of exchange with him, try a lot of things and, and then um, find the, the right, the right uh, road to it. So how do you find that out? Is it about him asking him specific questions or do you ask him for like sonic mood boards to, to hear what kind of stuff that he likes and then base your brief on that? Or how do you actually extract that information from him? For example, for Go Fast, I think I did like uh, 30 versions of every, of every track just to get uh, the right one that everybody plays because the director is choosing but also the producer and then when the producer and the director are not really happy between themselves, then you need to find a compromise. Well, so that was going to be one of my questions, is how do you tackle those creative differences? Mm, I mean... Who you, has the final say? I think the final for me is always, for my ears, is always the director, because it's his movie, so you're, you're working with him. And I think, actually, I'm, I have a lot of respect for the directors, because it's really, in my mind... Um, the most difficult job ever, because he has to deal with music, but also he has to deal with the actors, with the lights, with the cameras, with all the technical uh, team doing the movie. It's so much work, and you have to handle all this in, in one time. But it's, again, it's, it, every time it's very different. You have some directors who really want you to uh, propose something, some really know what they want, and it's just, of course, a question of communication. And um, what I say most of the time is, for me, the most important thing in movie, but also in music in general, is to achieve to get the greatest simplicity. I don't know how to say this differently, but you know, to, as simple as it is, it's uh, most of the time the best. Should we maybe have a little look at one of your projects? So, Vape, vape Wave? Yeah, yeah. Vape so Wave. That's, it's a French documentary about vaping. Exactly. It's a okay. movie from Yann Kounen. I don't know if uh, yeah, you know Yann Kounen. Yann Kounen did a few movies like... Uh, Doberman, which is one of my favorites. Also, Blueberry. It's about ayahuasca trip with uh, Monica Bellucci and, and Vincent Cassel. It's very, it's very interesting one. And recently, he did 99 francs. And I did two movies with him last year. One is Vaporwave, and the uh, other one is The Journey. And so, like, I wanted to choose this one because we can see, like, for example, when an artist from, from music is like just not used to do score, like, like, like I am at the beginning. And so we, most of the time when I start to do music for a movie, I, did, I do one time and um, it basically a lot of information. And it, then I need to delete elements from this music to get to the point where it fits the image. Because most of the time I deliver too much. And so because I'm used to it, to just to go through my mind and see where I'm going. And then I need to delete a lot of layers to, to go through the point. So maybe we can listen what I did first um, when I see the image and then uh, where, we, where, where, it, where, where it ended, maybe. Yeah, go for it.
So here we have a lot, we have a really lot of elements like you know bass lines, keys, drums. Um, it's really rich, so there is not much space for uh, imagination when you are when you watch a movie and then when you have like um, even if it's just image because it's this part there is no no dial no dialogues no actors it's just like a, a futuristic um, city and um, it it was not enough mysterious we didn't we didn't have enough space for getting deep into what we are watching there are too much informations so so in the end it um, it finished like this. Actually, I just keep the bass line, almost only the bass line from this track at the beginning, like... Uh... It's only the bass that I kept and few atmospheres around, just to make the as special as possible. I think the, the, main, the main way to do like good music for movies, and also like music in general, is to keep just one or two simple elements and to add like... Um, in different kind of frequencies, in the in the high or in the in the low frequencies, like sounds that we don't hear, but are here just to to make it feel uh, full, actually. So, can you just give us a little run through of the process scoring this film from start to finish? So you, you know, got an email saying, "Would, would you?" <laughs> yeah. Well, would actually, you... we go to drink a lot for the first two nights with the director most of the time. <laughs> And uh, we go to party a bit, and then we have like uh, we listen to music a lot. Then we go to studio. We sit, we sit, we listen a lot of music together, like from uh, scores or to like any kind of music to see where it's pleased by. And sometimes he has like idea like to just going to opposite of what I would have thought because he knows that the um, the, uh, the contrast between image and music is most of the time very interesting, much more than just to fit the music on the. On the, on the image, it's always putting, emphasizing the, the meaning of the image to get music very different um, about the, the character's topic, yeah. I know in, for example, if you write for TV advertising, you're competing with loads of different people. There are, you know, so many people um, submitting demos and the kind of director ends up going with the, the one they like the sound of the most with that composer. Is that the case in film or not? At the start, is the director, you know, working maybe with a few people? The cinema industry uh, is really looking for electronic musicians because it had, it, it's like five, ten years now that they're really, there is a new generation of directors and producers who are really into electronic music and they think that it's interesting the way we produce music, the way we compose music, to, to change a bit the, um, the, the way of like, you know, just having strings and, and like all these usual classical elements that we used to listen in, in electronic movies. And I think like Ennio Morricone, long time ago, like did a lot of uh, work with big teams. And uh, Hans Zimmer today also like appeals to a lot of new uh, composer electronic musicians. And I think it's, it's good for, um, I mean, if you, if you guys are doing like electronic music, I, I would really advise to go through like maybe a music supervisor because the, the music supervisor are really the one who are feeding the directors. So there are like few companies like this, like. You could, you could knock the door and make listen what you're doing. And, and um, of course, you, doing your own album is the best, the best card to show. But if you just want to do score for, mu for movies, 
is definitely like going to music supervisor and directors, you know. So once you've kind of established your relationship with the director, you've gone out for a few drinks, you've had a little listening <laughs> session, you, you know, you figure out what maybe he's looking for, then are you in the studio? Do you have to work on this full time? Is it, it sounds really time consuming, but obviously you have, you know, your DJ life as well. So does that have to take a back seat while you're doing this or do you manage all of this? that at the same time <laughs> you, you never sleep no but you don't sleep so much i think yes because like um it, it's it's just question of of choices and priority i think there is moment like um, i'm i'm not doing for like maybe four or five months during the year so i can really you know focus on on doing music for myself for my new album or just for for movies and um the, the most time consuming thing is doing music it's you, you do it quite not easily but you're doing quite fast but then when you go to edit and when you go to the um, fi doing the final cut for the movie, when they just like take four images a minute or something like this, you have to change the whole music every time. So this is really time consuming. So it's better to get good technicians with you to, to do this, yes. So I guess when you're writing music for a film, you, do you have very strict deadlines? Um, there are like two things, like they, they sent you the synopsis maybe two months before the shooting or something like this, or three months. And then, um, so you have a lot of time to prepare, but then it's like very, very like, um, the music is the last thing. So most of the time you're in a rush because like they did everything, they did the shooting, they did the editing. Um, Why do you think that they leave music to the last minute? Uh, you have to ask them, <laughs> I don't know. But it's- Is that kind of annoying though? It's not, I mean, it's like this. It's just like... Do you um, think it would be better to be able to work on it, you know, from, from the treatment stage, for example? Do you think it would mean that we would have, you know, better music overall? In a way, it's possible, but also I'll, for just my, my own perspective, I really like to work in when there is, like, strict deadline and schedule. I'm much better when it's like this than when I have, like, eight months to do something. Most of the time, I'm a bit lazy, you know, I have an idea, but I don't go really deep in this and I don't work really... I, love, and I really like to work fast, because otherwise, like, you know, I do think, like, best music is the one that goes like this. If you, like, work and rework and work so much on something, it means that the main idea, the first idea was maybe not the best. But you know, you need to go most of the time through this process to then get the very good one, the, the, the idea that will, that will land, that will last. There's that film out at the moment, isn't it? Oh, I can't remember what it's called, Baby, something Baby in it. Basically, they did everything the other way around. So the film was cut to the music, which I thought was really interesting. Like the video. I'm actually, I'm, I just finished my, my album. So now I'm really thinking about what should be like the next video for my album. I'm really into the idea of working on, on long, long videos that, is, that are not movies, but not videos either. So. Um, as, an, uh, as a musician for my album, of course, I think it's, it's very interesting. But I really understand like movies that they put the music in the end because they have so many parameters to organize before that. So what I like is to send the music to the director. So when he's shooting and he has this in mind or sometimes he can play the music during the shooting. So it inspired them and they, just for the reason sometimes it's very important. Um, so this is the best way for me to do is doing the first very rough demos, S send them to the music supervisor or director before the shooting, so he can have this in mind and can really like grow with this. And then when he's back in, in studio and sitting just to edit and, and finalize the movie, then go more deeper and... So can you talk to us a little bit about the production elements of th this track here on the, the vaping film? Maybe I can take another one. I can take yeah. the, the journey, yeah. but I'm not sure if the, the song is very, good idea to check but let's try it. Most of the time I was saying you know we, you start with one element and then you have to to delay the layers to to go like just for the most simple one and here it's the opposite I just go for from one sound I think it's the movie is about toothed well we said like that toothed whales yeah, toothed whales <laughs> and dolphins it's really like underwater with like it's giant beast from from the ocean and so it's a bass, and I thought they, I need to do like this bass really organic. So the best way to, to make this was to add a lot of elements. So let's try to see if we can hear it correctly, but 
So this is just a baseline from a scenes, a mood, a MOOC scenes. We we know what is this. Uh, we know how to do this. And then I was thinking maybe it was interesting to add like elements from uh, organic elements. So this is a fire a fire whips like you just like the sound of the fire like whoosh, doing this. Then there is another one like where, if you want to go, do good baseline, there is one or two tools. There is if you have this Universal Audio card. I'm not working for Universal Audio, but they have two good plugins. The one is Voice of God, and uh, you had this with uh, Transient Designer. Not go to technique, but these two plugins, you put them together, and you can do amazing baselines and playing with the pitch too. Like then you have this kind of uh, result. So for me, this is the whale sound, but just for me. Huh? And so I can show you then the result with the video. When you receive this image of just the water, the animals, is like for me the most important thing was to try to make them speak, and to 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 see like um, how I would love to listen to them speaking and finding the good organic way to 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 make it sound. That I hope it sounds like this. Yeah, sounds awesome. So it was most of that score more sound design then, as opposed to very musical. Yeah, exactly. This is more sound design. Yeah, I don't know if you know this actress Alicia Wikander that uh, was the actress of uh, Ex Machina or Jason Bourne and, and uh, she's the new Lara Croft that we, you, you're gonna see her in the, the next uh, uh, Lara Croft movie like in, the, in a few months. And I was with her this weekend and we were like speaking about production and sound design and music for movies. And it's really becoming uh, very important because we can do music just with sound design. Uh, we can get the same emotions. And uh, what I try to achieve in the next work that I'm doing is to mix all these elements, going through like a classical music background, because my mom was an opera singer, so I'm used to work with a lot of these uh, elements, piano, violins and stuff, and or strings, sorry, in English. And so try to, to mix like sound design with, with uh, classical elements to make uh, it the most personal as possible, yeah. Are you classically trained? Yes, but I don't know how to play anything anymore. <laughs> I was a really, really bad student, you know, so I'm really happy we have like a More of a software. synth man now. Yeah, exactly. Can you give us a little overview of your studio setup and any like go-to synths or plugins that you use a lot when you're writing for film? The best one, I think, is like the Universal Audio for all the effects and, and sound design and stuff like this. They are really good with the Sound Toys one um, because I think like the way to make effects is... Um, the sound toys are really good to get like 5.1 surround sound system because it's really what is it about in, in cinema. Um, and uh, I mean, a lot of scenes because it's, uh, it's my thing. But also I record more, more and more like elements, real elements, just to, to make the, you know, this whole package. I like to, to mix digital and organic elements to make it like more relevant. And comparing Vapewave to The Journey, was the process pretty much the same or is every film that you, or f project that you work on really, really different depending on, I don't know, I guess budgets and people, you know, that you're working with? Does that have an impact on it? No, I think like every movie is very different. And so I'm actually, I'm working on a new movie at the moment. It's a Western. So like coming from a house and techno background is not really the most... Uh, uh, so what kind of music are you writing for that? I can make you listen to a little thing that we did. This is the thing, you know, I did like with Nicolas and Jerome. Mm -hmm. 
so the, 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 new, the new trio that we tried to do. So we, we, we did start with like something very classical like this. This is, this is the first uh, demo that we did was a bit too classical. And then we, we decided to do something more like... The idea is just like to mix like what was the old western with all these you know these it's vocals amazing. like like this and and to make it sound a bit more, more modern. So in a way, it reminds me a bit that can I'm not comparing it, but what uh, Tom York can do with you know when he's vocalized and this kind of thing, yeah. trying to so it's this western like uh, 50, kind of fifties music for western and stuff like this, but um, still with a string element to get the, the this big landscape and and so in this soundtrack are you working with live musicians and instruments yeah yeah, yeah. it's a mix of everything yeah doing these types of projects must be really good for just making you a better musician and like pushing you out of your comfort zone i mean the the, the comfort like when you do music or any art in general the comfort is very dangerous it's um it's a risk to do always the same kind of thing and um, it's always good to find good challenge to yourself to make it. It sounds very of obvious, but if you do every day the same track, I mean, you will lose your energy. And I think the good, the good music and the good, um, the good way to, to, to do art in general is to really like make the form and the energy matching together. So uh, the form can be the band, the, work, the people you're working, and the energy is like your inspiration, of course, that you, you have like through yourself or through the band. So just to kind of summarise, what do you think are the, the key benefits um, that you've had from writing for film and TV? Having a normal life for two months in a year. <laughs> Maybe That'd then. be nice. <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, I, mean, I live in Paris since three, four years now. Before I used to live in Milano and in Lyon. And for me it has been like really in, in, important because to, to, to move to Paris because you meet a lot of different artists. You know, it can be directors, actors, uh, designers, uh, contemporary artist and every artist on his own is really like get specific knowledge and specific food to give you to inspire you and just making for me like you know this diversity and the fact of meeting so many different people has been really like for me the most inspi inspiring move. I guess there will be financial benefits as well. I think it's better to be in Carl, Carl Cox and a score guy <laughs> if you want to get if, if the money is your is your challenge but I don't think it should be because the money will come as soon as you, you're good in what you're doing, in any, in, in any domain. Okay, well, a big round of applause for Agoria. Thank you so much Thank for you so coming. Much.